He's going to be our little adorable replacement. This is Birdo. Why, greetings, little beans, and welcome to the actual spooky month. I am your host, your favorite scary godmother, Ellie Stitches. And yeah, welcome to spooky month. <laughs> I can't be spooky. Yes, Halloween is around the corner and October has officially begun. And Kiki is scratching my stuff. But anyways, yes, October has officially begun. And I'm gonna give a little twist for our little scary stories. I am not gonna read any creepypastas for this month and for next month because I'm just gonna take a little hiatus off of creepypastas. This month is all gonna be about a theme. a theme and the theme is Halloween related stories and I actually picked out about three interesting ones for each week for October that's why there's a reason there's no um, warning for this one so I hope you will enjoy this one because this is actually a very interesting brief history of one of the most brutal things that has happened to a bunch of women that were accused of witchcraft any of my little witches out there that would pretty much know about this story, to me, it breaks my heart how they treat women back in those days. If I was in that time, I'd be burnt into a crisp. But modern days, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so, sit back, relax, sip on some pumpkin spice, and enjoy a little bit of some pumpkin pie, because we're gonna go through the brief history of the Salem Witch Trials. Let's begin. The Salem Witch Trials occurred in Colonial, Massachusetts between early 1692 and the mid-1693. More than 200 people were accused of practicing witchcraft, the devil's magic, and 20 were executed. In 1711, Colonial authorities pardoned some of the accused in compensating their families, but it was only in July 2022 that Elizabeth Johnson Jr., the last convicted Salem witch whose name had yet to be cleared, was officially exterminated. Since the 17th century, the story of the trials has become synonymous with paranoia and injustice, fueled by xenophobia, religious extremism, in long brewing social tensions, the witch hunt continues to beguile the popular imagination more than 300 years later. In the medieval and early modern eras, many religions, including Christianity, taught that the devil could give people known as witches the power to harm others in return for their loyalty. A witchcraft craze rippled through Europe from the 1300s to the end of the 1600s. Tens and thousands of supposed witches, mostly women, were executed. Though the Salem's trials took place just as the European craze was winding down, local circumstances explained their onset. In 1689, English monarchs William and Mary started a war with the France and the American colonies, known as King William's War to colonists, the conflict ravages regions of upstate New York, Nova Scotia, and Quebec sending refugees into the county of Essex, and specifically Salem Village in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The displaced people place a strain on Salem's resources, aggravating the existing rivalry between families with ties to the wealth and a port of Salem's and those who still depended on agriculture. Controversy also brewed over the reverend Samuel Paris, who became Salem's village first ordained minister in 1689 and quickly gained a reputation for his rigid ways and greedy nature. The Puritan villagers believed all the quarreling was the work of the devil. In January 1692, Paris, daughter Elizabeth or Betty, age 9, and niece Abigail Williams, age 11, started having fits. They screamed through things, uttered peculiar sounds, and contorted themselves into strange positions. 
A local doctor blamed the supernatural. Another girl, 12-year-old Ann Putnam Jr., experienced similar episodes. On February 29th, under pressure from magistrates Jonathan Corwin and John Henthorne, calling all officials who tried local cases, the girls blamed three women for afflicting them. Tichuba, a Caribbean woman enslaved by the Paris family, Sarah Good, a homeless beggar, and Sarah Osborne, an elderly, impoverished woman. All three women were brought before the local magistrates and interrogated for several days, starting on March 1, 1692. Osborne claimed innocence, as did Good, but Tichuba confessed. The devil came to me and bid me serve him. She described elaborated images of black dogs, red cats, yellow birds, and a tall man with white hair who wanted her to sign his book. She admitted that she signed the book and claimed there were several other witches looking to destroy the Perchants. With the seeds of paranoia planted, a stream of accusations followed over the next few months. Charges against Martha Corey, a loyal member of the church in Salem's village, greatly concerned the community. If she could be a witch, then anyone could. Magistrates even questioned Good's four-year-old daughter, Dorothy, whose timid answers were construed as a confession. The questionings got more serious in April, when the colony's deputy governor, Thomas Danforth, and his assistants attending the hearings, Dozens of people from Salem and other Massachusetts villages were brought in for questioning. On May 27, 1692, Governor William Phipps ordered the establishment of a special court of oyer to hear and Terminer to decide. For Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties, the first accused witch brought in front of the special court was Bridget Bishop an older woman known for her gossipy habits and promiscity. When asked if she committed witchcraft, Bishop responded, I am as innocent as the child unborn. The defense must not have been convincing because she was found guilty and on June 10th became the first person hang on what was later called Gallows Hill. Just a few days after the court was established, Respected Minister Cotton Mather wrote a letter imploring the court not to allow spectral evidence, testimony about dreams and visions. The court largely ignored this request, sentencing the hangings of five people in July, five more in August, and eight in September. On October 3rd, following in his son's Cotton's footsteps, increased Mather then president of Harvard, denounced the use of spectral evidence. It were better than ten suspected witches should escape than one innocent person be condemned. Phipps, in response to these pleas in his own wife's questioning as a suspected witch, prohibited further arrests and releases many accused witches. He dissolved the court of Oyer and Terminer on October 29th replacing it with the Superior Court of Judicature, which disallowed spectral evidence and condemned just three out of 56 defendants. Johnson, the accused woman, exonerated in July 2022, was left out of the 1957 resolution for reasons unknown, but received an official pardon after a successful lobbying campaign by a class of 8th grade civic students. In the 20th century, artists and scientists alike continue to be fascinated by the Salem Witch Trials. Playwright Arthur Miller resurrected the tale with his 1953 play, The Crucible, using the trials as an allegory for the anti-communist Mithcarsium, then sweeping the country. Scholars offered up competing explanations for the strange behavior that occurred in Salem with scientists seeking a medical cause for the accuser's affliction and historians more often grounding their theories 
in the community's tense socio-political environment. As an early hypothesis now viewed a fringe especially in historical circles, according to Vox, Poe cited that the accuser suffered from argotism, a condition caused by eating foods contaminated with the fungus ergot. Symptoms include muscle spasm, vomiting, delusions, and hallucinations. Other theories emphasizes a combination of church politics, family feuds, and hysterical children, all of which unfolded in a vacuum of political authority. As Encopedia Britannica notes, ultimately, the causes of the witch hunt remain subject to much debate. In August 1992, to mark the 300th anniversary of the trials, Nobel laureate Elie Easel dedicated the witch trials memorial in Salem. Also in Salem, the Peabody Essex Museum, which houses the original court documents, mounted on exhibition, reckoning with and reclaiming the tragedy in the late 2021 and early 2022. Finally, the town's most visited attraction, the Salem Witch Museum, attests the public enduring enthrallment with the 17th century hysteria.